Well, it is that time for Code Pika to end up gushing about yet another series, except this time this is a series that he actually played when he was a little Code Pika. And by little, I mean basically when the Game Boy existed. Anywho, it's actually time for me to end up taking a dive at taking a look at the Wario Land series, minus Wario Land Shake It. I kind of want to end up saving that for more so of a video for itself. I hope you kind of understand. But we're actually going to be taking a look at Wario Land 1, 2, 3, and 4. And why I kind of end up enjoying the Wario Land series overall over the WarioWare series. And hopefully by the time of this end of this video, you'll end up realizing why I actually like the Warrior Land series compared to the WarioWare series. Even though they are technically two different games, but you get what I'm trying to say. WarioWare is obviously still going, while the Land series is basically somewhere in a ditch, in a graveyard, trying to figure out how to resurrect itself. Anywho, without further ado, let's end up taking a look at the Warrior Land series. In 1994, they ended up creating Wario Land 1. Wario Land 1 was the very starting point of Wario being his own character. Yes, he kind of ended up sharing a little bit of elements from Mario, but he managed to end up being successful enough to actually be his own platformer and his own character overall. So the story of Super Mario Land 3, Wario Land, was actually taking place right after Super Mario Land 2. After Warrior was defeated, he basically ended up hearing about some sort of treasure that was essentially a peach statue, which he can obtain to be able to get his own castle. Since he was kind of jealous of Mario having a castle, he kind of wanted his own. Wario ends up harboring a ship from some random pirate and end up heading off to an island known as Kitchen Island. Kitchen Island was the home of the Black Sugar Gang, who is their leader, Captain Syrup, but not only has a bunch of treasure, but also resides on the island itself. Wario not only managed to beat up her crew, but also steal her items as well. It's uh, kind of weird that Wario kind of just run up onto this Kitchen Island, stole half of Captain Syrup's treasure, and basically just call it a day. After Wario has his final confrontation with Captain Syrup, Wario successfully finds the Peach statue that was under Captain Syrup's castle. Ironically enough, Mario shows up and steals the Peach's statue right under Wario's nose. To Wario's bewildered, it didn't really matter. He ends up basically activating the lamp that ends up summoning the genie. The genie requires a little bit of compensation. By compensation, he wanted money. So that way, Wario can be granted one single wish. Once Wario ends up giving not only the treasures that he's obtained throughout his journey, but also the money bags as well. Granting Wario his wish, he is granted a castle of his own, leaning into the events of Wario Land 2. And that's kind of the premise of the entirety of Wario Land 1 is that, you know, Wario finds a kitchen island, ends up basically going through the entirety of the area of Kitchen Island, beating up Captain Seros' greatest men, and basically boon her out of her own castle. Luckily enough, it explodes, so it doesn't really matter because apparently Captain Seros seems to have the knack of blowing up her castle. It doesn't really matter. Who is Captain Syrup, by the way? Well, she's kind of a very pirate-esque, kind of like a, a little bit of a um, 
Jasmine looking like character, to say the least. She's cute, she's beautiful, she teases Wario in future games, but hey, she's not really a bad guy per se. She never tries to kill Wario. They basically just bicker and end up having like exchanges. In fact, I think Wario Land Shake It, he actually finds her annoying. Well, to say the least. I don't even know if Captain Sarah actually has a crush on Wario. All intents and purposes is that these two are kind of alike. Wario likes treasure, she likes treasure. Wario's not a pirate, she's a pirate. They're not alike at all. I don't know what I'm talking about. But all I do know is that Captain Silver is a very huge massive contrast compared to Bowser from Mario. Mario obviously never really had a human-like villain, he only had a reptilian, which was only Bowser, and obviously the Koopalings. While Wario, he has never really had a reptile kind of villain. Most of his villains are kind of slightly either demonic or humanoid creatures, to say the least. Humanoid creatures sounds very rude. Captain Syrup is not a creature, but what I'm trying to say is that most of Wario's villains usually stem from monster of the week <laughs> that's pretty much it wario land one's gameplay is relatively just like mario minus a few differences here and there wario for one thing can actually end up charging in his base form allowing him to end up dealing with enemies without the need of having any sort of particular power up the only drawback to this is that wario does not have a dedicated run button which sucks but he does have assortment of power ups similar to mario he has the bull garlic which allows him to turn into bull wario which ends up allowing him to charge further and also be able to utilize the ground pound. Ground pounding allows you to end up stunning enemies, which will be very useful against certain types of creatures that you're fighting. There are a lot of enemies in Wario, and being able to butt stomp will be able to stun them for just a slight bit to be able to actually gain advantage of them. The next one is the dragon garlic which i'll probably call it just that i don't really know what they really actually call it but the dragon garlic allows wario to end up donning a dragon helmet that ends up shooting fire in front of him the fire ends up allowing him to destroy enemies without any issues and also ends up destroying blocks as well blocks are kind of more so of wario's as obstacles there are sometimes being paths where wario kind of has no choice but to use the charge ability to get through them or he can end up utilizing the dragon to be able to also do the same thing. The next one is the Jet Garlic. Now the Jet Garlic allows Wario to turn into Jet Wario. Now Jet Wario has the capabilities of having an increased speed, which is really good, but also ends up allowing him to glide for a short period of time. You can actually cancel this out by basically going back and forth, like turning left or right, depending on which direction you're going in the opposite direction. And you can continuously keep utilizing the Jet to keep getting further and further. Be warned, however, is that when you're utilizing the charge, you're kind of a weak. You're, you still have to take two charges to be able to break blocks. So just be warned by that. You also do not have the ground pound. You don't have the ground pound in Flame Wario either. So the main goal for Wario Land 1 is that you just have to get from beginning to end. That's it. And the other main goal is to also find these hidden skull doors, which you'll end up having to obtain a key to be able to unlock the door. Some can be hidden and some you usually end up showing up in certain predicaments that ends up happening within the game there are a total of seven worlds that you will be visiting throughout the course of wario land one and they are pretty straightforward to say the least they're just one level which you have to go back to to be able to gain access to the skull door to be able to find captain syrups as treasure but other than that there's not really much to really go on with these levels they're pretty interesting they're standard mario theme like levels you got your first level which is a beach level you got your second level which is kind of a straight up half lava level you got your third level which is an ice level you got your fourth level which is lava themed you got your fifth level which is kind of more so a little bit of water not so much water it really kind of interchangeable between the two you got your sixth level which is more so forest and you got your final which is the seventh level which is kind of more so of a vertical climb to captain seraph's castle 
And that's pretty much the summarization of most of Wario's stages. They do have like one segment where when you beat the first level, the water tide will actually rise and you'll have to go back because there's like two levels that now consist of water, which is pretty cool. There's also a debug mode that you can easily access if you end up pressing the select button a certain number of times. There are two mini games you can play. One is pretty much luck based and the other one basically requires you to end up chucking your bombs at enemies from very far distance you end up getting lives out of this which is really good because Wario can die in this game unlike future titles which he cannot die except for four and shake it you can die in those games but you at least have health in that game compared to Wario Land 1 which you just have the standard Mario health system so yeah that's pretty much it Wario Land 1 really kind of showcases they wanted to not stray away from the formula that's why it was called super mario land 3 wario land and not just wario land itself by itself it was just literally promoted as being a super mario land 3 game but in reality it had wario land as the title now you think that wario land being a character that you play as would have been weird but Oddly enough, people actually enjoyed Wario. People actually liked Wario. People liked his gameplay because it was different from Mario. It wasn't it wasn't vastly that different compared to the future titles, but it was a good starting point for folks to be like, okay, this is definitely a very interesting take, and we wanted to see more, and luckily enough, Nintendo delivered. Right after Wario Land 1 was very successful, they end up releasing another game, which was Wario Land 2 on the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. In 1998 and 1999, Wario Land 2 were respectively released on the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. The Game Boy Color obviously ended up giving it color, while the Game Boy didn't really give it anything and it just looked cool to just look at. What are the differences between the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color version? Nothing. It's just that you think that it having a black cartridge would have basically made much of a big deal. To give it a little bit of an example as to why I say that, is that the black cartridge for Conqueror's Pocket Tales had a different gameplay than the colored version. So if you played the Game Boy version, you had like a different game compared to somebody who was playing on the Game Boy Color. I thought that that was the same for Wario Land 2. It was not. It's just that in Wario Land Game Boy, the Wario Land 2 version, I think they kind of forgot to get rid of one of the fishes that was the beta fish that's in the Game Boy version. I don't know if it's in the colored version. I don't think it is, but it's just funny and hilarious to realize that they kind of left that out, but it's fine. I actually thought that the Game Boy, Game Boy version of Wario Land 2 was vastly different. It was not. Anywho... Wario Land 2's story takes place right after the events of Wario Land 1. Essentially, Wario is now living it up in his new castle, lazying away because he has a bunch of money thanks to taking Captain Syrups' treasure. Even though, thinking about it now, I don't know how you have money, considering the fact that you didn't really wish for money, you only wish for a castle, so whatever. Anyways, the Brown Sugar Gang, now actually called the Black Sugar Gang, ends up ransacking Wario's home and stealing all of his money. This ends up causing Wario to wake up after being set by an alarm, very disrupted by it mind you, and this ends up causing Wario to immediately end up going on a goose chase to end up getting his money back. Throughout the course of the game, you end up finding Captain Syrup running around throughout the entirety to make it back to her castle, even though she could have had a much better way of actually doing this. I, don't, I, I do not understand this lady at all. Eventually, the finale is basically Wario confronting Captain Syrup at her castle, and basically both of them having a fight. Wario obviously wins, and Captain Syrup and her gang of hoodlums are booted out, and we don't see her again until 2008. <laughs> Say goodbye to Captain Syrup, guys. We've never seen her ass ever again until 2008. That is kind of sad. 
But yeah, that's pretty much it. Now that will be the normal canonical route of Wario Land 2. Wario Land 2 is a little bit different from Wario Land 1. For instance, you no longer have stages anymore. You now have chapters that you go through and each chapter has a different objectives that you need to accomplish. Sometimes they just want you to get to the end even though they kind of end up saying it differently. It's relatively is just getting to the end. And sometimes they want you to fight a boss. Bosses were in Wario Land 1, but they were more so just your standard try to hit them three times sort of approach while in Wario Land 2, they're no different. The only difference is, is that in Warner Land 2, you can't die anymore. The only way for them to beat you is they have to use one of their skills that will allow you to just instantly lose the battle. And then it just resets and you just have to do it again. These boss fights are interesting, but can be a little bit frustrating if you're not used to them. For instance, there's like one moment where you're fighting a bunny who proceeds to try to dunk on you in a basketball fashion. And then there's also a snake that can eat you and turn you to an egg and uh, poop you out. And I, I don't know why pooping you out allows you to skyrocket into the air. It makes no sense. This game is weird. Speaking of weird, that's essentially what Warrior Land 2 is for me. It's one of my favorites out of the three on the game. Game Boy, I should say, but it, uh, it does have its share of problems. For instance, there are a total of 50 levels in this game. To be able to access the 50th level, you have to go ahead and play these two assortment of the mini games. Well, I think you only have to play through one of them. You don't really have to play through two. There's one mini game that you have to play that you can only access at the very end of the stage, which is essentially a matching number mini game. What this matching number entails is that the game will end up spending 50 of your total coins and end up flipping one panel. Sometimes you'll have a panel that can show you what the number is going to be. In fact, there is a very subtle tell of how you can tell what number is going to be picked. If you see the black line, if it's horizontal, chances are it might be a horizontal number. And if it's vertical, chances are it might be a vertical number. For example, if you see a vertical line, then that means it's probably one. If you see a horizontal line, chances are it might be three, but don't go ahead and second guess yourself because the problem is, is that if you fail, you have to do the level all over again. And some levels in Wario Land 2 can be pretty long if you're not careful. So try to at least complete these one and done so you don't have to worry about it. The second mini game consists of you doing a treasure chest mini game, which is basically matching an icon. The enemy icon will show up as soon as the game begins, and then you get the chance of choosing three difficulties. You got hard, normal, and easy. Hard mode will basically give you an ultra instinct segment of trying to figure out if you can be able to be that great at memory game. Normal will give you almost the same amount as hard mode, just slightly long, just slightly, the very slightly longer and easy will basically be nice to you. And I'm going to be honest with you, if your eyes are terrible, you probably will still mess up on easy. Here's the kicker though, you have to spend coins and that is the total coins that you have in the stage. Not the total coins you have overall, no, the total coins you have in the stage. And hard is 50, normal is 100, and easy is 200. Once you end up managing to beat Warrior Land 2, you'll basically get access to the stage select. The stage select allows you to go ahead and choose different routes that Warrior can take. For instance, if you actually stay asleep and don't actually progress through the first level, you will end up on a very, very what if alternative route to the point that is essentially what if Captain Syrup kicked out Wario out of his house and then took over his castle. I kid you not, that's literally what happens. All the alternate routes are very short compared to the main route, which is a little bit longer. For instance, the main route has five chapters and 25 levels, but the other routes kind of are a little bit shorter in a sense that like sometimes they'll give you five levels to do, or sometimes they give you 10. Now, once you've collected all the map pieces and all the treasure chests, you can end up gaining access to the 50th level. The 50th level will allow you to obtain the final treasure chest in the game and also end up doing a time attack stage. But that's neither here or there. Warrior Land 2, you can definitely end up telling that they really decided to do stuff differently, especially that it is a platformer per se. I would say it's a platformer, but to be honest, it's kinda not. 
The reason why I say it's not a platformer is because there's no bottomless pits in the game. Like, you can kind of also say the same thing for 3 and 4 as well, as there's no bottomless pits in that game either. So the first game is technically a platformer, but Wario Land 2 is kind of more so of a exploring collect-a-thon type of game where you're basically going or out of your way to explore the levels to not only find these mini game doors but to also end up finding treasures and hooding goodies through secret passages and whatnot and that's pretty much it you're still trying to get to the very end of the stage but you're more so doing some little exploratory missions as well and that's kind of the thing that's kind of very good about Warrior Land 2 is that it's vastly different compared to 1. Now you may not be interested in that, but I'm going to be honest with you. If you're not interested in that, then you're probably definitely not going to like Warrior Land 3. In fact, Warrior Land 3 is a little bit more on the limited side compared to 2. So 2 ends up introducing some new things. Since there are no power-ups in the game, you now have power-ups via the conditions. If you're familiar with Mario Galaxy, it's kind of like the perfect example I can give. Mario Galaxy had like situational power-ups like the Fire Flower, Ice Fire Flower, I mean the Ice Flower and the Spring Mario and Boulder Mario. Those are essentially situational power-ups. That's kind of the same thing here for Wario himself is that he has these things called the condition power-ups or conditions that Wario will undergo. There are 11 conditions in Wario Land 2. They start to get a little bit limited as you <laughs> progress through the game and they kind of probably get completely omitted and shaken. But there are 11 that you can end up finding. There is Fire Wario, there's Ball Wario, there's Spring Wario or Bouncy Wario, there's Fat Wario, there's also Bubble Wario, Crazy Wario, <laughs> this is like so many things that Wario can basically have, like Flat Wario, it's kinda, it's pretty insane at how much this dude suffers just to end up getting money, I have to say, but hey, at the end of the day, he's just fine, and he's still just our Wario. But yeah, the conditions really ends up showcasing that it can be very different compared to Mario's gimmicks where, you know, he kind of ends up really utilizing the whole... I'm like, you know, it's funny too, because with Mario Galaxy introducing temporary power-ups, it does give me very big... Oh, this is just Wario just in Mario form. It's like, wow, I can't believe Mario is copying Wario now. It's like, wow, I can't believe that's happening. <laughs> it's kind of what it reminds me of, though. But no, after Wario Land 2, we end up getting introduced to the next game that will only be for the Game Boy Color. And that game is actually Wario Land 3. <laughs> Land 3 was either a game I had on my own or probably borrowed. To be honest, remembering it now, I think I probably borrowed it from my cousins who end up having the game. Why did I end up playing it? Well, because I had Warrior Land 2 and I also had Warrior Land 1. So I was wondering what Warrior Land 3 was about. And I have to say, at first, the game was one of my favorites because it we didn't have Warrior Land 4 yet but it was one of my favorites mainly because it was different the colors were different the mechanics were different and the music was actually pretty okay Warrior Land 3 ends up basically taking what you loved about Warrior Land 1 and 2 and basically getting rid of it entirely Warrior Land 3's story takes Wario onto a journey in the music box world where he's introduced to a hidden figure that basically claims that the hidden figure was cursed and needs Wario to obtain 5 musical boxes. Once Wario obtains those 5 musical boxes after defeating the Guardians who was blocking the music boxes, he ends up basically resurrecting an evil clown. This evil clown claims to want to end up destroying not only the world, but also take over the music box world as well. Wario ends up defeating this guy very easily, mind you. Quote unquote easy, this guy is pretty annoying. But once defeated, it ends up restoring all the citizens back in the music box world. But the reason why they were protecting the music boxes was because they didn't really think that Wario would actually defeat the evil clown. 
They actually thought they were, he was going to be working for him or something. But, nah, once they saw that he defeated him, they were like, oh, okay, you're actually cool. That's cool. That, that's cool. We sorry. We try to destroy. We try. We sorry. Even though it's like a lot of weird conditions. You got worms. You got weird little cook guys and all that other stuff. And I'm like, okay, you guys really are trying to stop me here. But that's not really the thing that makes Warrior Land 3 different compared to Warrior Land 1 and 2. For instance, you got stages back from Warrior Land 1, but now there's a little bit of a difference thing. Wario is nerfed. What I mean by nerfed is that if you are a person who came off of Warrior Land 2, you'll be vastly disappointed when you play Warrior Land 3 and realize that he can't do half of the stuff that he did in 2. Wario cannot grab enemies, he cannot ground pound, he can charge, but his charge is super weak, and he can't even, he, he can't do anything, he can't even jump high, which I didn't even know was even a skill that he even had in the first two games, but yeah, he cannot jump high. Wario needs to gather power-ups that he can end up finding throughout the courses of the stages. Now, the stages are sadly smaller and limited this time around. They are not as big as Wario Land 2, and they're not as straightforward as Wario Land 1. Throughout the courses of each and every single stage, you will be gathering keys that will be able to unlock different color chests. There are four separate directions that you'll be going through the music box. There's north, south, west, and east. Each and every single direction ends up sporting a different type of level set. It's basically a way to kind of end up realizing that you're kind of just going around the music box because the music box is essentially a globe, so it kind of makes a lot of sense. There are some very interesting things that you can find in some of these chests, like some useful items, and useful items will have effects in the music box world. It's pretty nice, though. Like, you know, it's this. It's pretty interesting to kind of figure out, like, oh, what's this item going to do for this level? And once you end up finding this item, the game will tell you where you're supposed to go or where the change has happened. Unfortunately, there's a drawback to this system. If you end up getting another useful item right after getting the first useful item, it will overwrite that first useful item and basically tell you where to go for the second useful item you obtain. Basically screwing your memory if you're trying to figure out where you're supposed to go next because there's sometimes there are multiple stages that you can go back to. And that's the thing about Warrior Land 3 is that you'll be going back to majority of these stages to not only collect different types of treasure chests, but to also end up progressing the story. The goal of the story is to collect all five music boxes. You can't do that unless you have certain particular powers. In fact, you can't even fight the final boss until you have obtained the final power up in the game, which allows Wario to pick up heavy items. So yeah, if you think that you can just beat the final boss all willy nilly, I have some bad news for you. You, you don't have that luxury. <laughs> you just do not have the capabilities of being able to do that, which is a bit unfortunate. And that is where we come to the issue of Wario Land 3. It is fortunately tedious to play this game. When you go through all 25 stages, yes, there are a total of 25 stages in this game. It's fine. It's fantastic. But when you have to go through them four times, it can get a little bit tedious to the point that you start to see the cracks of Warrior Land 3's issue. It can be a very tedious game to 100%, but when you're going from point A to point B, it's not too bad, but it still kind of has that tedium in it when you kind of have to go through all the new or old stages and you know there's nothing different like all right they do change some of the stages slightly but not to the point of where it's like oh this stage is actually different because like completely different from the first time i played it it's like no it's still relatively the same for the most part it's just that you know, you kind of expect a, like a little bit of a major change. Maybe that's probably on me. Maybe because I'm older now and I probably would have would have appreciated if it was a little bit more fleshed out with these levels. But to say that it's like complete crap would be very bad. It's not complete crap. Warrior Land 3 
is good for those who kind of like the Metroid slash Castlevania type of gameplay. It's just that if you're coming off of two where you kind of end up having the ability to explore everything without any sort of limitations, you're going to be a little bit disappointed because three, unfortunately, limits you on what you can do. You are railroaded into some of the treasure chests in the beginning of the game, but once you start to get all the power ups, that's when you can kind of end up doing a little bit more. Unfortunately, once you obtain all the power, chances are you might be obligated to just go to the final boss because you need to just get five music boxes and the final power up to be able to beat the final boss. You also need like the boots to be able to jump high because I'm going to be real with you. If you're trying to beat this guy without them high jump boots, you ain't beating him. Speaking of high jump boots, these boots are kind of a reference to Samus Aran. It's kind of cool. I like it. And that ten, there's your Metroid reference right there. But yeah. That's essentially Wario Land 3. It's not too bad, but it's not one of the games that I can go back to or literally sit about. I remember the first time I recorded this game when I wanted to do this video before, I just stopped. I couldn't be bothered. I legit was trying to get everything, but I just couldn't be bothered to do it. I just was feeling burnt out. Maybe because I was coming off of 2, but no, I think it was because... There was a lot of things in 3 that just frustrated me. But that's still not to say that I don't end up disliking it. I like for what it was, and I still will probably rarely go back to the game. Not always, but I will sometimes go back to the game. But that's neither here nor there. After literally one year right after Warrior Land 3, we ended up getting a game that ended up coming out in 2001, and it was probably by far one of my favorite Wario Land titles in the handheld series, and that is Wario Land 4. Now, Wario Land 4 completely outtrumps all three games in terms of music, in terms of level design, in terms of personality, and I know it's stinking unfair because it's technically on the Game Boy Advance, which basically means that it's obviously going to be significantly more advanced or better in terms of gameplay and everything. Like, you have your stage. And then you have the gimmick that you need to do. You have the first level that is more so of a tutorial to showcase what is Wario's abilities. None of the three games had that. None of the three games had a tutorial to be able to teach you what everything does. Now, mind you, you can make the obvious excuse to saying that you didn't really need any sort of tutorial for the first game, and you didn't need a tutorial for the second, and you probably also didn't need a tutorial for the third because you had none of your abilities anyways. But to have, like, the uh, tutorial zone to not only teach you what you're going to be doing in the stage, what you need to do or get to be able to progress through the stage, is actually pretty unique to say the least. Anyways, let's get on to that story. Warlands 4 story basically has Wario driving his pimp mobile up into the jungle because he ends up finding out that there is actually a gold palace or gold temple that ends up spoiling a lot of treasures. Wario ends up finding this temple, but unfortunately falls down into a bottomless pit. I don't know why he jumped down there. Didn't really make any sense. He didn't really think this through. He ends up finding himself on the purple passage, which allows him to go through the hieroglyph stage that basically teaches him how to play the game. Once he ends up successfully beating that zone, he will fight the very first boss, Spoil Rotten. Spoil Rotten is defeated. That's when the rest of the zones are unlocked to you. So you have a total of four zones that you can explore with a total of of 16 stages yes it's actually a lot smaller compared to wario land 3 <laughs> but there's nothing wrong with that mainly because it having 16 stages 18 in total technically because there's two more stage there's like the first stage and then there's the final stage they're kind of just one unlike the zones which have four each but once you end up exploring these four stages you will understand why that there are only 16 stages well 18 like they are short but they can be a little bit long depending on what you're doing 
the canon way that you should kind of go through it is basically you, you have your emerald path which mainly ends up being a little bit on the beginner friendly side you have your rubies passage which basically ends up giving you a bit of a kind of a medium difficulty you have the topaz side which is kind of a very intermediate difficulty and then you have the sapphire side which is a bit of the hard difficulty because of how some of the levels are the main goal for each and every single stage is to find keezer and the four pieces of puzzles and also to find the frog statue to actually escape from the zone because when you actually enter the area you click on a frog switch that opens a portal unfortunately you need to hit the switch again to be able to open the portal again to be able to leave now the problem with this is that there is a bomb inside it and i do not know why <laughs> the bomb will end up starting a timer which you will have to end up escaping from the dungeon because i or the level i should say i guess because the level is about to blow up or something but here's the kicker if you actually reach zero what ends up happening is that the total amount of points that you have will start to drain out of wario and if it reaches zero you die and that's it speaking of dying you can't die normally like in warrior land one but you can die again but this time you have an hp meter this time around so you don't really have to worry so much about how much damage you take you just have to worry how much hearts you have left which is actually pretty kind i do like this system over the whole power up system thing because at least that way you know you still have a chance of keep going you don't have to worry so much of how much damage you take because trust me if you're playing on the harder difficulty, chances are you might end up taking a lot of damage that you will like. Now, Warrior Land 4 ends up having like the CD discs that you can find in some of the stages. They're kind of more so hidden and you kind of have to go out of your way for them. But there's also, but not only that, there's also points that you need to gather. I mentioned that the points get drained once you end up having the timer re zero. For the record, you should never have the timer reach zero unless you're playing on the harder difficulty. The reason why you want to have a high score is so that way you can end up getting a gold crown. To be able to successfully 100% the game, you need to not only beat the game, you also need to collect all the CDs and you also need to go ahead and collect all the gold crowns. Once you've collected all the gold crowns, you can go into the sound room and listen to what is the, essentially the Japanese song that is played in the very first Emerald stage level. I don't know why, but there are like three lyrical tracks that Wario has. One that are in English and the other one that's in Japanese. I don't understand why. It never really made any sense to me as to why I decided to do this, but hey, all I know is that it, it sounded pretty cool. I like Wario Land 4. The story is maybe very simple because to be honest, like after Wario ends up activating all four passages and manages to defeat all the bosses there, he will have to go ahead and fight the Golden Diva. The Golden Diva is the one that actually turned our little black cat over here, who is essentially a cat that you saw in the beginning of the game, who is essentially a princess. Apparently she was turned to a cat. Don't know when that happened. I think that, to be honest, I think the Gold Diva and the whole princess being turned into a cat is actually supposed to be a reference to another game because there is a game that one of the characters is in and i think um that's where it's supposed to be like i think that is what um the game is supposed to be a reference to so if you're familiar with link's awakening with the with the little ralph looking character or the main character that ends up helping you as an assist trophy in super smash brothers the game is called the frog for whom the bell tolls for the record i played a fan translation of this game so what you're seeing is a fan translation video so i played this game and essentially from what i've gathered what the story is about is that you are a prince who is going out of their way to be able to fix a bell that is known as the spring bell apparently the spring bell has the capabilities of turning everybody back from frogs to humans because the final boss in the game well supposedly it never really actually finished it is actually a snake themselves so you need to go ahead and end up finding not only the princess but to also save your crew mates who have all been turned into frogs so i think the princess being turned into a cat might be a reference to that the only difference is is that there's no bell unless you know you count the kind of sort of bell noises that you kind of hear when you're starting the timer i don't really know this is just a massive 
theory crafting guess i don't know anything about as to why the princess is a cat like they don't really kind of explain too much about it all they say is that the gold diva is actually the person who's responsible for turning her into a cat and that's about it but once you end up rescuing her you can end up getting the princess back now there are a total of four endings that you can get there's the bad ending kind of where she's a baby and you only get that ending if you waste too much time fighting the final boss or if you don't end up getting any of the three treasure chests in any of the bosses because all four bosses that you fight in all four passages also have time limits as well and if you take too long the treasure chests will start to disappear so be warned for that you gotta have to be quick and you can't be wasting too much time but you also will end up losing time in the final boss as well and if you take too much time there the treasure chests will start disappearing one by one. If any one of them disappears, you're probably just going to get the third ending because you can't get the perfect ending if you do not have all the treasure chests intact. Why? I, I don't know. It doesn't really make any sense. You think just having all four of the little piece of jewelry that all the four bosses have will actually work, but no, apparently the treasure chests have something to do with it, which makes no sense but whatever <laughs> anyways her true ending or the true ending itself i should say is more so her with short hair i'm a stickler don't really like the short hair all that much she kind of just looks kind of weird but whatever hey wario gets a kiss and that's basically the end of wario land 4. he ends up keeping all the treasures that he's obtained and he will never get an adventure until seven years later which is hilarious to say the least <laughs> but that's it that's actually all the warrior land games i basically mostly just been gushing about the series like i love all four games like if i had the capabilities of playing all of them without 100 percent in them, mind you because they could be a uh, three of them are tedious to do as 100 percent, especially two and three but I actually adore this series so much, mainly because it's interesting to see a villain end up having a platformer game for themselves or a collectathon or whatever you want to call it. I don't really know. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, like, the first game is obviously a platformer like Mario, but then 2, 3, and 4 comes out, and you obviously notice that they definitely did not want to be like Mario anymore, and it made it completely different. And I do definitely like that. Like, yes, they still probably have, like, a little bit of platforming elements, but for the most part, you're kind of on the ground, and your platforming is, uh, is a slight platforming, quote-unquote. <laughs> But no, Wario's kind of like an interesting character. He's not a character I play in Super Smash Bros., mind you. And yes, I was a little bit disappointed when I saw that he was wearing his WarioWare outfit. Because at first, I thought the WarioWare outfit was like, oh, that's like his Wario Land 1 outfit with the little helmet and everything. No, it's just WarioWare. I'm like, oh, okay. And I can understand why WarioWare is popular. You know, the micro mini games are fantastic. The characters that Wario has is also fantastic. To be honest, if they ever made another land game, I wouldn't mind seeing the WarioWare cast in the game. I mean, I don't know what role they would have per se, but I'm pretty sure they could do something with them. They can all live on different separate islands and Wario will have to go through all their islands to complete all their different types of levels. Hell, if you really wanted to, you can make the game 8-bit or whatever his name is stages be based off of old Mario game titles or whatnot. And if you wanted, like, the other guys, like the grooving dancing guy, you can make the stages be more dancing elements into it where Warrior has to platform through the beat or something. Seriously, to be honest, there are so much stuff you can do with those characters. It's kind of friggin' nutty that they never really bothered to figure out what they can really do. Mind you, saying and doing are obviously two different things, so trying to implement mechanics like that is probably not possible for Nintendo. But hey, if they manage to do it, and that's what they go for, don't at me because I was right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's what they should friggin do rather than being like let's keep making these micro games you know what i'm saying don't get me wrong i don't know there are people who like the micro games that's fine if you like the micro games keep liking them i'm not gonna crap on you for liking what you like that's not what i do but i'm not gonna go ahead and sit here and say that i don't <laughs> you know i wish that i kind of had my series back 
because I mean to be fair I can't really say that the warrior wear series is the reason why I'm not getting a land series because realistically it's kind of a dumb thing for me to keep complaining about it's not it's probably not the warrior wear series fault as to why we don't get a warrior land series unless it is if it is the fall of it then I'm sticking to my guns but if it's not, then it really doesn't matter. You know, that's just that, that's just literally the two cents of the matter. Anyways, sorry for me ranting off too much. Uh, I apologize. Uh, apparently, these videos are becoming just me just ranting, talking. Well, actually, not really. Some of them are me just actually saying stuff, and some of them are not me saying stuff. I'm very in. I'm inconsistently funny. <laughs> Anyways. I've been Ko Pika, and I'll be seeing you guys next time for when we end up talking about more of any video game that I decide to do. <laughs> Anyways, see you guys next time. Ko Pika, over and out. Laters!